very useful, particularly if I'm looking at property that's on the edge of the city or maybe even right outside the city, and I want to know, is this land likely going to be developable in the next 15 years, the next 30 years? Um, when do they expect sewer and water to get there? Now, to, to really grasp all that, you have to look at our comprehensive plan and understand um, what the tiers mean of, of how development happens into the future. But a good starting place is to, to look at zoning and uh, to look at land use and growth, and it'll list out um, what that, that land is planned for in the future. We do have, um, in our comprehensive plan, a listing of whether something is likely going to be commercial or whether it's going to be residential or whether it's going to be acreage. So it's out there. And so before somebody comes in and they say, can you tell me, do you think we could do a change of zone on this property so I can do what I want to do? Come here and look here first because that's going to give you a good idea of whether or not the city is going to support a change of zone on that property. We also have zoning in other districts. This talks about not only our zoning districts, R1, R2, R3, R4, but building line districts, capital um, view corridor districts. Um, so there's a lot of information there as well. Development plans we're going to look at here in just a second. This is where you would click to find all the information. So if you had a client, say, um, in the Walmart situation who was going to buy a house that backed up to that vacant lot, you could have come here, clicked on development plans, and there would be um, an approved final plan, and you want to search by date uh, because they list a whole lot by There's usually a lot of plans listed here, and they're not always organized by date. So my advice to you would be to look for a plan that has the most recent date on it. You could click on that, and then it would bring up a PDF of what was actually approved on that site. And then, of course, the sectional land base, if any of you have ever looked at those, that's just a big map of a section, and it shows where the lots are. And lots and parcels aren't always the same thing. Uh, I just want to point that out because I get a lot of calls from people who are confused who have a parcel in it, and it just has one parcel ID number, but it actually has two lots on it uh, because it has the same ownership, and so the county assessor grouped it together, but it actually has two pieces of land on it. Our development layers, this is something that you're going to use when you want to see the big picture. Um, you've looked, you clicked on the piece of land in general that you want, but you want to know what's going on around it. You use this tool, the Development Review Layers tool, to see where floodplains are in a, in a larger area. Wetlands, <coughs> land use and growth, so on and so forth. The thing I would note here is these have pluses and minuses next to them, so these are expandable. When you click on that, you're going to get more information and often more choices for you to drill down to get the information that you're looking for. Um, this is an example of the land use and growth that I was talking about over here. Um, we'll, we'll see a map here in a second that shows some of these different tiers. If you have no idea what tier one priority um, or, or what the, the red slash marks mean, you can come up here and it's hard to see on this particular one because it's kind of hidden by the arrow. And it will tell you um, what the, it's the legend essentially, just like on the map, what the, the signs on this map mean. Okay, so here, for example, <coughs> I went in and I was looking at the big picture. And since we were out here at Hillcrest, I thought we would kind of look at what's going on in East Lincoln. How does how is this area going to develop over the next 15 years? And I won't go into depth about what's here. What I wanted to point out is um, by clicking on land use and growth and, and proposed south and east beltway alignment and the growth tiers, this tells me that in East Lincoln, and I, I just happen to know from working on the comprehensive plan, that these striped areas are ripe for development now. The next phase of development after these striped areas um, are, are, are developed would be this red area and then the pink area and then way later in the future, past 60 years from now, you'll begin to see that development here in the green and the light blue areas. So that's what it shows me. Now I have to go back to the comprehensive plan to get a full understanding of what um, tier one priority A means versus tier one priority B, but at least that kind of gives me an idea. So the one thing you can take away from the meeting today is if you can remember that stripe means now, red means a little later, pink means later than that, 
then you're good. When somebody calls me up, I'm like, it's in the pink. <coughs> Chris, you lose that. It's in the pink. Um, <clears throat> and, and this will also show you um, where the East Beltway is proposed in the future. And, and put it in context of where property actually is. Sometimes you'll see a map of where the South or East Beltway are planned, but it's not in context of what's actually there. Okay, so and this is just another example of how you can look at the big picture of zoning. Again, this here is the corner of 70th and A. We have office zoning here where the, the eye surgical center is, um, B2 zoning, where, which is mostly commercial zoning, we have clock tower, um, and this is for that area, the big picture of, of that zone. And again, you do that by doing these drill downs. You click on zoning, click on boundaries in Lincoln, and it'll give you that information. If you clicked on zoning districts here, and your view and your zoom way out of this map, you'll get to see the, the zoning for all of the, the villages <coughs> and, and smaller towns. In the Christy? Yep. Would the East Beltway being in that green area of the color have any correlation to the timing for that East Beltway? It does not. So no. How far in the future are they talking about? The East Beltway may, last I heard, maybe my grandkids will see. Um, but, you know, it all changes too because the South Beltway, they're saying, you know, it's going to happen within the next 10 years. And I had heard. Three years ago, that won't happen for 20 years. So it's, it's really hard to, to say for sure. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is if you want to um, direct clients to this, this site also, if they're looking around and they want to see what's there, you can have in our tools, we have a street view and an aerial view. The difference between the two is one is going to give you an aerial and one is going to take the aerial away. So you can better see where the streets are and where the This one is the, is, a, is the search tool, and it's really the only search tool on this website, so it's very important, and it's kind of small, and I wish there was a way to make it bigger, but they don't, they don't let me control that. So when you're looking for information, I usually, if you call me up and you say, Christy, I have a question about a property, the first thing I'm going to ask you for is the address. And if you give me a legal description, I, I'm going to say, um, okay, well, let's try to narrow it down and see if we can't find it. Because a legal description isn't going to help you at all on this website. You can search by address, by intersection, to get you close to where you want to go. Um, if you have the parcel ID number, which you get from the county assessor's office, that's helpful. Um, or you can search by owner. To do that, you type the information in this box, and you click search. To change whether you want to search by owner or by address, you use these, these little arrow keys, and that will change what you're searching for. So here's an example information in, click search. Um, I did that and I just did it on my own name because I happen to know there's only three I chords in Lincoln and I didn't want to bring up a big long list. Um, so it brings up those, those three and I wanted to find my property. So I come down here and I click just in here on my property and then the map pops up and says, oh, that's where Christy lives. Here's a picture of her house and you can move on down the road. Then you would, you would go back to that, that one that kind of looks like this you can click on my property and find all the information that's ever been associated with my house in terms of planning on that property. Okay, so site-specific information. Um, let's just say, and I'm going to use a commercial property. I know maybe a lot of you, how many of you guys deal with commercial versus residential? Um, and I specifically didn't pick residential because I just knew if I just randomly picked a site and I used somebody's lot, they'd see it online and then I'd get that nasty phone call. Why don't you put my house online? I don't like to use this as an example, no matter what I did. So I just picked a commercial site and I was pretty sure the developer wouldn't mind here. Um, we were going to focus over here on this office development. And I want to know specifically what's going on with this office development. You would come to this box, which is open on your screen. <coughs> First, start this, click on the dot, and then click over here on your parcel. Um, again, I'm not going to go, th I'll go through this very quickly. Here's the parcel information that you get. If you want to go back to the assessor's website and get the information that you usually get off that GIS viewer, you can simply do that by clicking on this arrow, and it's going to take you to the assessor's <coughs> website. 
Um, there's floodplain, there's no floodplain on this property, so that's the information you get. Land use and growth. It shows you that the part I clicked on is used for a parking lot. Here's when it's annexed. Here's how it was approved. So on and so forth. Um, here's some zoning information. It's zone 03, traffic and now zone, which probably doesn't mean a lot to most people, um, and a new growth flood standard exemption areas. Here is a list of um, plans, site plans, and documents that are associated with that development. You can see there's a scroll bar over here. Be sure when you're looking for plans to note if there's a scroll bar, because there's a whole lot more information than what you're seeing just right here. You'd scroll down and you'd see more information associated with the site. If you find a plan that you like, you can click on this little arrow and it's going to take you to that same page that you went to when you were when we looked at PATS or that white page with the blue lettering and at the bottom it listed all of the documents that were associated. It takes you back to the same information. All of this is really a big loop. And then finally again the, the section on the so here, I went and I was hovering with my mouse over an administrative amendment, uh, amendment that happened in 2009, and when I did that, it gave me the boundary of where that administrative amendment was. An administrative amendment means it's something that was approved by the planning department that de did not have to have public action. So it didn't go through planning commission, it didn't go through city council, it was administratively approved. And you can see that that happened Okay, so then this is just the list again. Here is the information that popped up whenever I clicked on that document that I wanted. Again, note, all of the documents, everything that's clickable for you to see is down here at the bottom. Um, once you click on an item, it'll be highlighted in yellow. And when you do that, it brings up the site plan for that development. And this was actually the letter that administratively approved the change to that, that site. Does anybody have any questions about how you get to this information? So a couple other tools that I'll point out, because I'm just about out of time here, would be that there is a measurement tool that you can use by clicking on the measurement. This box comes up. You click on this tool right here, and then you're able to measure anywhere on the aerial that you want to measure. And this is helpful because I get a lot of questions from folks who say, what, how far is my house from where my lot lines are? This isn't going to give you an exact distance because we can't precisely overlay lot lines with aerials that are taken from an airplane, but this can give you a good guess. So when, the, when your client says, well, how, how big is my front yard? You can come here, use this tool, and once you've clicked on it, you can click from here to here, or in this case, I wanted to measure the parking lot. So I clicked here, came down here and clicked again, and it told me that that is 320 feet. Great. Yes? Is there any way you can give us an idea how accurate that might be or what? It's pretty close. I mean, usually it's not off by more than five feet, um, in my experience, but there's no way to know for sure without a survey. Um, if you want to see a picture, of the property that you're looking at, you use the same tool. How many of you guys have used Google Earth before? Quite a few of you. So this is basically um, a window to get to those same Google Earth views that you would use by going through Google Earth, but you don't have to click back and forth between two programs to do that. So then you, you click on your little man, make sure it's activated, you click your little man where you want him to go, and it'll bring up a picture of the property that you're looking at. And this is a picture of the, the office park that we've been looking at. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about were these map layers. This is a little bit different than some of the other information that I showed you. Um, this allows you to get to your parcel measurements and your parcel square footage. And that's another common question that I get from folks when they call and they say, I want to know, not what the square footage is of the house, but what, which you can get from the assessor site, but what's the square footage of my lot? Um, by clicking on, on these, this drop down here, you can click on parcel square footage and it will bring it up. Christy? Yeah. Same question. Well, that's how accurate are you? This is very accurate. This is, this is, um, this is very accurate. Um, I believe that these dimensions are actually what come off of the, um, the plat map, the, the sectional plat map. 
And so those ones should be perfect. Again, there's a measurement and there's an example of the square footage. And that's, that's all I have for you. Does anybody else have any questions about what's here?